But did you know that a test has been developed that can predict if you'll respond well or not to minoxidil? And you can take that test before you even start treatment. It might sound a little bit like science fiction, but this technology is already in place. And if it gets FDA approved, you could soon be using it yourself. I'm going to tell you all about it in today's video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGuard.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. If you're watching this video on minoxidil response testing because you're personally worried about your own hair loss, then click the link in the description to take the HairGuard hair loss quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. So today I'm going to share with you something that you're probably not going to hear about in many other outlets, but it has big, in fact, huge implications in the way dermatologists treat male pattern baldness. It's called minoxidil response testing, and it's technology that has actually already been developed. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a the problem that minoxidil response testing is designed to solve b how this test will accomplish this and c what this is going to mean for you as somebody suffering from hair loss. Let's get into it. So guys, the problem is that minoxidil won't work for most men. The majority who try it simply won't grow out new hair. Actually, it's over 50% of people. For example, I'm looking at the results of a large study published in 2007 in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. The study was randomized placebo-controlled and double-blind. Now, I picked this study because it's got a very large sample size and is of very high quality, but its results are very typical of what you get in other minoxidil studies. So, this study compared the efficacy of minoxidil 5%, the strongest version, versus placebo, emboldening men who were between a 3 and 5 on the Norwood scale. The treatment lasted for 16 weeks. Once the treatment was up, a blinded panel of three experienced medical doctors reviewed the before and after head photos. Ratings were given on a seven point scale from plus three to minus three. So plus three stood for significant hair regrowth, plus two for moderate and plus one for slight regrowth. Zero was given to a more or less unchanged head of hair and then the negative values were for new hair loss since the start of treatment. You can see in these before and afters what a plus two looks like. And this is an example of moderate regrowth. Now, in the far right column of this table are the results of the men who were randomly treated with the 5% minoxidil. 52% of the men on minoxidil got a zero for no change. And another 10% or so dropped out of the study, which left less than 40% of men with some regrowth after 16 weeks. That's quite disappointing. So what's the reason behind the poor response rates? So here's the thing. We're now at a point where we understand what sets apart the responders from the non-responders. It has to do with how minoxidil is broken down or metabolized on the scalp. The active metabolite of minoxidil, the stuff that actually makes your hair grow, is called minoxidil sulfate. So you apply the Rogaine on your scalp and the minoxidil is then converted to minoxidil sulfate inside the hair follicles. This conversion is achieved by some enzymes that your own body naturally produces. They're called sulfotransferases. Now, I know what you're asking at this point, so I'll answer it now. Otherwise, it's going to be distracting you for the rest of this video. If it's minoxidil sulfate that actually does the magic, then why are we even bothering with minoxidil in the first place? Why can't we just apply the minoxidil sulfate directly to our scalps? Well, there's a couple of very practical reasons. The first is that minoxidil sulfate is very unstable, so if you put it in a solution, it will quickly break down in a few days. It's very difficult to put it in a liquid solution that you can store and use over several weeks. The other reason is that minoxidil sulfate is a very heavy molecule, much heavier than minoxidil. If you apply it directly on the scalp, it won't be able to penetrate the skin and reach the follicle. So applying the minoxidil sulfate directly is not going to happen. So let's go back to the sulfotransferases, the naturally occurring enzymes in our scalp that break down the minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate inside the hair follicle. Here's the thing about these enzymes. Their activity varies significantly from person to person. So in some people, these enzymes are very active and in others, not so much. But here's the thing. It's the degree of the enzyme's activity that determines how well the minoxidil will be converted to minoxidil sulfate inside the follicle, meaning it's these enzymes that will also largely determine how well you'll respond to minoxidil treatment. I'm going to share with you a fascinating graph from a 2014 paper. The balding patients in this study were treated with 5% topical minoxidil for six months. At the end of six months, 
They were classed simply as responders or non-responders. The responders were those who had some new hair, and the non-responders either had no new hair or had suffered additional hair loss. You remember the study that we looked at in the beginning of this video that classed the patients from a plus three to a minus three? Well, anybody in that study who had zero or less would have been classed as a non-responder in this study. And any patient in that study who got a plus one or higher would have been classed as a responder here. It's as simple as that. So back to this study. The researchers plucked some intact hairs from the balding area of each patient, and they immersed them in a solution that basically measures the degree of sulfotransferase activity in the hair. And when the researchers plotted each patient's degree of sulfotransferase activity, they saw this. Responders are in orange and non-responders in blue. Almost everybody with an enzymatic activity higher than 0.4 was a responder. On the flip side, almost everyone with a score less than 0.4 was a non-responder. Using this 0.4 value as a cutoff point, the scientists could then classify a patient as a minoxidil responder or non-responder with a massive accuracy of 96%. The company behind the development of the test is Applied Biology, a biotech out of Irvine, California. They patented this technology in 2014, and we've linked to the patent in the description below. It breaks down the test in more detail. Now in 2016, another company from the Daniel Allen Group purchased the intellectual property rights to the test from Applied Biology. And a year later, in 2017, another company from the Daniel Allen Group submitted to the FDA an application for a new medical device. The name of this device, rather predictably, is Minoxidil Response Test. Now, it was a quote de novo application, and this is the classification given by the FDA to those devices that can't be fitted into existing classes. If approved, this device will create a category of its own where similar future devices will also be classed. I should clarify that when approved, this will not be a device intended for use by the general public. It will be sold to physicians only, who will then use it with patients who are considering starting minoxidil treatment. According to the manufacturer, you'll get the results of the test within 24 hours. At this point, we have no details on the cost of the test yet. So guys, I'm not gonna lie, if and when these things come to market, the implications are going to be absolutely huge. There's now a bunch of scientific papers that have used the test and the results consistently show accuracy over 95%, even as high as 98%. And here's the thing, the larger the database of patients who take the test, the more accurate the predictions will become because you'll be able to start correlating it to factors like the age of the patient, the type of hair loss, other underlying conditions, and so on. So this is not going to be a static, one-and-done kind of technology. It's just going to keep on getting better, to the point where it might even reach near 100% prediction accuracy. Guys, this stuff is real, and frankly, we're surprised that it hasn't made it to the market yet. But when it does become available, it will save a lot of men considerable money, time, hassle, and unnecessary side effects, from taking a treatment that was never going to do anything for them in the first place. Guys, we're keeping a close eye on this story and you can be sure that we'll be the first to update you when there's a new development. Guys, let me know what you think about the minoxidil response testing in the comments and click the video on the screen now to learn more about the truth about male pattern baldness. Thank you.